so where are we today? Oh, Houston NASA Space Center. Decided to take a take a tour of it. It was what pretty cool. Um, we're gonna go inside and check some things out. Maybe take a little tour on the NASA what the NASA site, I guess they call it. I don't know. It, it's the Houston Control Center's across the street. There we go. That part I do know, but as far as this whole thing, it's like the NASA museum. So uh, we're gonna go inside, check it out. You are such a dork. <laughs> Man of little words today, I guess, but yeah. hopefully he'll... Uh... But see, we need to scroll around so they can see this cool Mars thing over okay, here behind we're us. scroll around. See up there on the wall? Up, up on the wall up there? It's pretty cool. Yeah. Although it's not like Aaron until June. And yeah, it's like, what, February? Yeah, I guess tomorrow's March 1st. Yep. But So we're missing that. I like all the Mars Project stuff. It's pretty cool. But... Well, we'll definitely be back another time. This was definitely worth going to, um, you know, I think. Yeah. And uh, touring around, so we'll we'll find out and show you guys around. We have some video maybe, and uh, we'll catch you at the end. All right. Let's go, let's go, take it to the top. And we don't stop, cause it's now or never. Let's go, let's go, take it to the top. And we don't stop, cause it's now Hey, you want this to fit in the Jeep, you said? Yeah. I'm sure if I can get it home, Dave will make it fit. All right, is that challenge accepted for Dave? It's a gravity difference. Uh, this one's just light and heavier than that one. Yeah. So this feels like my suitcase. Okay. Feels this like feels Laura's like Laura's suitcase. suitcase. So which one's heavier? Earth. So uh, this one's 12 pounds. This one's 4 pounds. I think you got it the other way around. Power body negative a, pressure a instrument. Hey, look, here's another dude for you, Austin. Taking a shower. He's <laughs> trying to shower. Oh, there's got the there. sleep compartment over here. Oh, dude, this is a creepy little. <laughs> Let's see. I don't know why, but I would not want to be. Oh, space. there's another one up there, too. Yeah. I would not want to do this. Kudos to these people. It's like anything the men can touch. Bring her forward and drop her down. Yes. Yeah. 
All right, so Austin's on the big plane. Dan's gonna try to drop it down. In position. You gotta use this one right here. Oh, okay. Okay. Keep it. Keep it. This is satellites are flying out there. It's like, when are they going to start hitting each other?
paid off to raise some of these cattle, bringing them to Austin. A portion of those proceeds will go to a college fund for those students, while the other part will go to a charity. <laughs>
way down this hallway, you'll go full, just keep shuffling your weight down until you get about to where the halfway point is, about where I am standing. Once you folks get down to me, we can have a little bit of a break waiting for the rest of our group to make their way into the hallway. Mm -hmm. Once we have the entirety of our group into this half of the hallway, we'll then begin our presentation, moving down to the other half during the second half of that presentation. Gentlemen, as we make 
take our way down the hallway a bit, you come towards the very center of our facility. Against the back wall, you'll see a small light capsule. This is the Orion Command Module. Engineers and astronauts have been doing extensive training to prepare a capsule similar to this one for our first Artemis mission into deep space later this year. While the first mission will be uncrewed, it will mark the start of our Artemis program. We have crewed missions scheduled to begin in 2023. Orion built upon the design of our earlier Apollo spacecraft. In addition to the autonomous and reusable, it is larger, capable of carrying four astronauts into deep space. Now for our upcoming Artemis moon landing, NASA has decided to let a few different companies design different landers for us to pick and choose from to constantly use. We like to refer to this whole event as the Lunar Lander Bid. During this bid, three main companies stepped up to the challenge being SpaceX, Dianetics, and National Team Human. National Team Human is an agglomeration of several companies, mainly Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and Blue Origin. These three companies collaborated to put together this large two-story spacecraft with gold foil legs that you see in the very center of our training facility. It's known as the National Team Human Landing System, which is a bit of a mouthful, so they gave it the nickname Blue Moon. The Blue Moon Lander was not chosen during the Lunar Lander bid because it is too similar in design to the Apollo landers from the 1960s and 70s. This comes as less of a surprise when you learn Northrop Grumman, one of those three major contributors, was the sole supplier and manufacturer of the original lunar excursion module from the 1960s and 70s Apollo missions. If you look over to the right of the Blue Moon, just in front of the old shovel nose cone, You'll see what Dianetics put up for the same bid. That's the Dianetics Alpaca. That lander can house up to six astronauts, allowing them to live on the lunar surface for up to one week. This design was not chosen because it includes two external fuel tanks that would be attached to the side of that lander that must be dropped midway through landing. This creates a bit of extra debris that we would not otherwise be creating, as well as create some waste and storage space on that original rocket body. So this design was also not chosen. So we have taken the SpaceX Starship instead for our chosen proposal. This does not mean that we will use the Starship for every foreseeable moon landing in the future. We would, however, at least like to use it for the first two. This is, however, a bit less clear of a goal now as we have yet to see a working Starship rendition. So we have seen two, or we have seen working renditions of these two other landing systems. If you look towards the very center of our training facility, you'll see a large silver cylinder with the blue logo Northrop Grumman on it. This will be a portion of Gateway. Gateway will be our next international collaboration between 16 nations, so somewhat similar to the International Space Station's 15. The module in front of us is a habitat module built by Northrop Grumman, where astronauts can live and conduct research while in orbit. Now, Gateway will be a critical part of our Artemis program as it will establish the first permanent human presence in lunar orbit. Now, a bit over to the left of Gateway, you'll see another set of silver scaffolding. Hanging off of this are two identical-looking robots. These are the NASA Valkyries. Valkyries' original intended use was to be sent to a natural disaster scenario, such as an earthquake, hurricane, or a flood. We also hope to send her into deep space to aid our astronauts on their journeys out there. The Valkyrie is a little bit top-heavy right now because of the large, heavy battery in her backpack. It makes her a bit prone to falling over and gives her a toddler wobble while she walks. However, her hands are very dexterous. Dexterous enough, in fact, to use power tools just as a human would, allowing her to complete a very wide variety of tasks. Now, Valkyrie can also be controlled many different ways. Some of my favorites include the use of an Xbox controller, or you can even throw on a VR headset and a special pair of gloves, and she'll mimic all of your movements. The last thing I'll talk about is way down on the far left-hand side of our facility here. You folks will see another set of blue scaffolding called the Argos. Mm -hmm. This stands for Active Response Gravity Offload System. And as we get a bit closer to the scaffolding when we're making our way out, you might notice this large tether that comes down from the center of it. We can hook people or objects up to this tether to simulate the gravity of different environments. Most recently, we've used the Argos during the testing for our next generation spacesuit. During mobility tests for this suit, we use the Argos to simulate the gravity of the moon or Mars. These are the environments that suit will most likely be working on. Underneath the Argos, you might see this large sand pit. This provides a bit more of a realistic ground feel for the astronauts on this system. 
as on the moon or mars they would not be walking on a hard concrete floor it'd much more likely be a rocky sandy surface that being said this does conclude our tour of building nine the astronaut training facility or the space vehicle mock-up facility if you folks have any questions about stuff we either talked about or did Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you haven't done so already, please remember to click the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel for upcoming notifications. We'll see you next time as we tour around Galveston.